The Philippines National Security Council will publish an updated Philippine map highlighting the country's maritime entitlements is underway in line with the 2016 Arbitral Ruling and the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. The new standard map that will counter China's 10 dash line map is crucial in terms of determining the extent of Philippine territory that is free for safe navigation and implementing environmental protection programs, according to the Armed Forces of the Philippines. AFP spokesperson Colonel Medel Aguilar said the map which abides by the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea will be important in giving Filipinos pride and responsibility to preserve the Philippines' territory. A Senate panel will craft an updated Philippine map in response to the 10 dash lines shown on China's new standard national map which claims nearly the entire South China Sea as part of its territory. The current updated version of the administrative map of the Philippines includes the Calayan Island Group, Scarborough Shoal, Macclesfield Bank, West Philippine Sea, and Benham Rise region. It also shows Saba, which the Philippines claims but is not actively pursuing against ASEAN neighbor Malaysia. The Philippines' 200 nautical mile exclusive economic zone west of the archipelago will be called as West Philippine Sea. Beyond the 200 nautical miles, it is still officially referred to as the South China Sea. This is the first time the Philippine government will publish an updated map showing the country's maritime entitlements, seven years after the United Nations-backed arbitration tribunal ruled some rock features in the Spratlys form part of the Philippines' EEZs. The UN Commission on the Limits of the Continental Shelf earlier, also approved the Philippines' application to extend its continental shelf limit beyond 200 nautical miles from the base shorelines east of Luzon Island. The 13 million hectare continental shelf, called Benham Rise by Mariners, was renamed Philippine Rise. Recently, China published its map showing 10 dashes forming a U-shape in the South China Sea. In August, the Philippines protested against China after the latter released its updated standard map showing 10 dashes that form a U-shape, claiming nearly the entire South China Sea as part of its territory. The area overlaps with the exclusive economic zones of the Philippines and those of Malaysia, Brunei, Vietnam, and Indonesia. The Philippines' updated map will have to undergo many layers of approval process to ensure that it is consistent with the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea and the Arbitral Award. This landmark ruling invalidated China's expansive claims in the South China Sea, with the arbitral tribunal largely ruling in favor of Manila in its EEZ and continental shelf that are being claimed by Beijing. The Philippines, Malaysia, Vietnam, Taiwan, and India, all of which have territorial disputes with China, have objected to the 2023 version of the country's standard map, released on 28 August by the Chinese Ministry of Natural Resources. The map includes a U-shaped line that reaffirms Beijing's claims to sovereignty over almost all of the South China Sea including the West Philippine Sea, a resource-rich and strategically important region through which trillions of dollars in trade flows each year. The line extends into the exclusive economic zones of a number of countries. It also includes the Indian state of Arunachal Pradesh, and the Aksai Chin, in the Himalayan border which China controls but India also claims, and the Russian territory of Bolshoi Usariski Island. At least six neighboring countries have objected to China's new standard national map, which features a 10-dash line, instead of the previous nine dashes, used to stake claims on the South China Sea, with an additional dash to the east of Taiwan. Waves of anger spread across the South China Sea and India this week, following China's publication of a new official map renewing its illegal claims to most of the sea and adding new claims along the east of Taiwan and the Indian border. This could also indicate that China also sees Japanese islands in the Ryukius as its territory. The new map repeats the nine dash line claims made by China and rejected by the United Nations Law of the Sea Tribunal, while also claiming new territory around Taiwan and to the north of India. The Philippines already challenged the then nine dash line drawn by China before the permanent court of arbitration. The court had invalidated Beijing's sweeping claim. On August 28, a day later, the Philippines Department of Foreign Affairs issued a statement that it rejects the 2023 version of China's standard map. Another interesting addition to the future Philippines map is the inclusion of Sabah as part of its boundary entitlements. 
Northern Eastern Sabah is one of the disputed territories of the Philippines, which is currently controlled by Malaysia. Sabah is located on the northern portion of the island of Borneo, in Southeast Asia. In the present day, Sabah is one of the 13 states together with its three federal territories that compose the Federation of Malaysia. Going back to the 15th century, the settlement currently known as Sabah had become part of the empire of the Sultanate of Brunei, during the reign of the fifth sultan known as Bolkia. In 1658, the Sultan of Brunei ceded the northern and eastern portion of Borneo to the Sultanate of Sulu in compensation for the latter's help in settling the Brunei Civil War in the Brunei Sultanate. In 1761, Alexander Dalrymple, an officer of the British East India Company, concluded an agreement with the Sultan of Sulu to allow him to set up a trading post in the region. It was been formalized in 1878, when William Cowie, on behalf of Dent's company, negotiated and obtained a concession in perpetuity from the Sultan of Sulu over its holdings in this region. This concession was signed on the 22nd of January 1878 in the palace of the Sultan of Sulu. The rights were subsequently transferred to Alfred Dent, who on the 26th of August 1881 formed the British North Borneo Provisional Association Limited. A few months later, the British government granted a royal charter, and the British North Borneo Chartered Company was subsequently formed on 1 November. In 1888, North Borneo became a protectorate of the United Kingdom. Administration and control over North Borneo remained in the hands of the company despite being a protectorate and they effectively ruled until 1942. During the Second World War, as part of the continuous expansion of the Empire of Japan, the North Borneo Island including Saba was occupied by the Japanese from 1942 to 1945. In 1945 after the liberation from Japanese occupation, North Borneo was administered by the British military administration and became a British crown colony until mid-1946. After the Philippines' independence from the United States on July 4, 1946, Seven British-controlled islands on the northern coast of Borneo named Turtle Islands including Cagayan de Tawi-Tawi and Mongsi Islands were ceded to the Philippine government by the Crown Colony government of North Borneo. But Saba still remained part of the British Crown Colony until August 31, 1963 when North Borneo attained self-government from the British Empire. Between 1961 to mid-1963, during the transition of the liberation of Saba, the Kabold Commission was set up to determine whether the people of Sabah and Sarawak favored the proposed Malaysian Union. The Commission had found that the Union was generally favored by the residents but also noted some opposition from the people but decided that such opposition was minor. Despite the opposition, the Commission made the recommendation without any referendum conducted, unlike the referendum conducted in Singapore. As reported by the Commission, ethnic community leaders of Sabah would eventually support the formation, Despite some opposition, an agreement was signed, and William Good, the last governor of North Borneo, signed on behalf of the territory on 1 August 1962 putting to paper the agreement to form the Union. Initially, the unification of Sabah to Malaysia was scheduled on August 31, 1963, but due to objections from the Philippines and Indonesia, the formation had to be postponed to 16 September 1963. At that time, North Borneo, currently known as Sabah, was united with Malaya, Sarawak, and Singapore, to form Malaysia. On 12 September 1962, during President Diosdado Macapagal's administration, the Philippine government claimed the territory of North Borneo, and the full sovereignty, title, and dominion over it were ceded by the heirs of the Sultan of Sulu, Muhammad Esmail Ikiram I, to the Republic of the Philippines. By then, the Philippines continued this territorial claim over North Borneo, based on an agreement signed in 1878 between the Sultan of Sulu and the North Borneo Chartered Company. It maintains the position that the sovereignty of the Sultanate over the territory was not abolished and that North Borneo was only leased to the North Borneo Chartered Company. However, Malaysia considers this dispute as a non-issue, as it interprets the 1878 agreement as that of cession and it deems that the residents of Sabah had exercised their right to self-determination when they joined to form the Malaysian Federation in 1963. Going back to the 17th century, the hydrographical and choreographical chart of the Philippine Islands was one of the first versions of the Philippines map. This magnificent map of the Philippine archipelago, 
drawn by the Jesuit father Pedro Murillo Velarde and published in Manila in 1734, is the first and most important scientific map of the Philippines. The Philippines was at that time a vital part of the Spanish Empire, and the map shows the maritime routes with captions from Manila to Spain and to Mexico known as New Spain and another Spanish territory in the New World. The map is not only of great interest from a geographic point of view but also as an ethnographic document. It is flanked by 12 engravings, 6 on each side, 8 of which depict different ethnic groups living in the archipelago and 4 of which are cartographic descriptions of particular cities or islands. In recent developments in the West Philippine Sea, the Philippines smears on China over the massive coral harvesting from a reef from Haudang Zhao in the South China Sea. The United States, through its top diplomat in the Philippines, has expressed alarm over the destruction of corals in the Rosal Shoal near Palawan, widely believed to have been perpetrated by the Chinese. The Westcom reports on coral destruction around Rosal Reef and Escota Shoal, with severe destruction to habitat damage that harms ecosystems and negatively affects lives and livelihoods. On Saturday, the armed forces of the Philippines Western Command reported the plunder of corals in Rosal Reef, with the Chinese suspected to be behind it. The Department of Foreign Affairs DFA, issued a statement expressing serious concern over the destruction of the corals, but without mentioning China. The DFA said the Philippines has consistently raised the alarm over ecologically harmful activities conducted by foreign vessels, an issue extensively discussed in the 2016 Arbitral Award on the South China Sea.